to my beautiful cousin Rocco, I dedicate this vlog to you in memory of all the wonderful moments we spent together. Ciao, buongiorno, and welcome back to another episode of Tales from Tuscany, where today I have the absolute pleasure and joy to be sitting here with the most beautiful Marie Kid all the way from Vico Pisano. Now, Vico Pisano is an absolutely stunning village with, a, with which I might say a few things in common with Chiani as far as I found out that Vico Pisano also has Etruscan history as does Kiani, and they both look beautiful. And they both look like wonderful places to live. And I'm so excited because I'm now meeting Marie for the first time after following her somewhat on films and on Facebook and all over the place. But also, she's only going to be about 40 minutes up the road from me, <laughs> yay, <laughs> when I eventually get to Kiani. So I'm meeting a kind of a neighbour for the first time, which is so exciting. So welcome, Marie, and thank you so much for joining us at Tales from Tuscany today. Thank you so much, Marissa. This is so exciting to finally meet you after we've been following each other. And I've seen your other videos and I absolutely love them and your journey and your story and everything. So it's a real honour to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind. So today I'm going to be asking Marie just a few questions. We won't keep her too long because she's such a busy lady. And I know this time of the year, your season has really jump started hasn't it this year very very busy and it looks like beautiful weather I can see the sun streaming in there through your beautiful windows of your home so I'm sure that's getting a lot of people into Tuscany really really quickly this year but um, I wanted to ask you so how did you end up in Tuscany and in particular in Vico Pisano? Okay, so first of all, just a little bit of background. I met Lorenzo in the UK, and then together we came to um, Italy to live. And we lived in the north of Italy on one of the lakes, which is very, very pretty. Um, but to be quite honest, it was, it was a chance day trip to Pisa, of all places. And I just said, you know what? I think I'd like to live here. Um, I'd like to live in Tuscany. Um, I found the whole, well, the climate is a lot better from up in the north of Italy as well. And at the time, I actually worked um, uh, for the airlines. I was a stewardess. So I needed to be near an airport. And Pisa ha it has the International Airport of Tuscany. So the initial plan was to move to Pisa, of all places. It was a small little city, uh, felt more like a town. Uh, but at the time, it's very, very difficult to find um property there it was before airbnbs and so um for those that don't know pisa is a university town and uh most of the properties were taken up by students professors um oh. etc so uh we just had to sort of look around the surrounding areas and we stumbled across Rico Pisano and fell in love immediately Wow, what a story. That's amazing. And by the way, we've just ticked another box of something in common. I was an airline stewardess as well. Really? Yes. For Qantas, the Australian oh. airline. Okay, so we were definitely colleagues because I was British Airways. <laughs> Goodness gracious, we're just finding out more and more and more things we have in common. That's incredible. <laughs> That's yes. Amazing. So, so. Wow. So you know the importance, then, Marissa, of actually having to live near an airport. So when we were in the north of Italy, I was not far from Malpensa Airport, but I was much further away. I was about 45 minutes. Yes. Um, here in Pisa, Vico Pisano is only 20 minutes from Pisa Airport. That's fantastic, so, isn't it? So and um, I didn't work out of Pisa. I had to work out of Heathrow. So I had to commute. So it was important to, to have, you know, a shorter journey. Um, so, yeah, that's how we fell upon. We actually lived in another little village just down the road in the same Comuni. Um, but Vico Pisano was the main town. So that's why um, we came here and I just absolutely adored it. So it's oh, 20 gosh. minutes from Pisa, but yet it feels in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That's the beauty, I think, of a lot of the villages in Tuscany is that when you look at them on the map, 
they are so close to so many of those important places that you want to get to quickly or you want to know that you've got easy access to. And yet, as you said, it's like a million miles away from problems, from all the hustle and bustle and yeah. everything else, but in fact, still so easy, such great locations, close to things, easy for transport. Like you said, having to get a plane somewhere, a train somewhere. Um, that was really important to me when I was looking as well. So I totally get what you're talking about. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yes. So our next question that I was going to move on to, well, what are the best choices you've made as far as living and working now in Italy, but in particular then in Vico Pisano? So what are the best choices that I've made? Well, the best choice I think I made was to give up working for the airlines. <laughs> <laughs> because... <laughs> It was a great job, um, a great career, I should say, yeah. uh, but it was exhausting. Yeah. And I wanted to be more involved in the community here. Um, I mean, basically, the house that we bought, we knew that part of it would become a vacation rental or holiday rental. And I wanted to be here. Um, so when we were going through the um, restoration, I wasn't here all the time. So and I just thought, I really need to be here. I want to make this part of my life. So and I knew there were lots of possibilities to create a different kind of career here. So when that's the beauty of Tuscany, there is so much around us. So I think the first thing I did was get to know my community and what was available here. Um, I couldn't have actually just um, got gone to work because um, I don't believe at the time my Italian was good enough. So I did. I wasn't looking to find a job here. Um, I knew that I would have to make a career for myself here. My husband was working here, so that that was fine. So oh, that's I don't know if that's answered the question. <laughs> no, 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 you have, because basically um, I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head, in fact, as far as a lot of people perhaps that have been in very regular jobs all their lives may not realise that when you do, unless you're someone who's just going to retire and you don't need to rely on anything else, they don't realise how much hard work perhaps or how independent you have to make yourself. I know that what you've just explained is exactly the same lifestyle that I had to choose to live when I first moved to France many years ago for 10 years, um, running a bed and breakfast and different things like that as well in my life there. And that was because living in a tiny village, I knew that we couldn't just get there and rely on there being jobs for us. Otherwise, you have to go and live in a big city. And even then, as an expat, it's not necessarily, you know, game made that you're going to get there and that you're going to find work so simply. So it's also having that mindset that, yes, I am prepared to set up my own business. I am prepared to make those choices to make my life work. So there's often a lot more involved, that's for sure. And it's a really good point to make because a lot of people have that dream, that lovely dream of going and living somewhere. But, you know, you have to think of all those practicalities as well. So it's a really, really very important mm. point that you've made, that's for sure. Yeah. So tell me then, in your daily life, can you name, say, three things? We'll keep it to lucky number three. <laughs> um, but you can, yes, name, three. <laughs> you can name five, <laughs> ten, I mean, 15, I don't mind, because I'm sure there's lots. In your daily life, what are the most favourite things that you have about living where you live and your daily life in Italy? Right, th only three. All right. No, go one ahead. Ten, fifteen. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one of the things I absolutely love, and I think you're going to find the same as well, Marissa, is being part of a community, being able to walk out of my door in the morning and just, you know, go up to a little bar and have my morning cappuccino. It's like a or cafe. I tend to drink just uh, an espresso, actually, but it's it's like our morning ritual, and we absolutely love it. We've got a garden, and we can sit in the garden as well and ha have a a cafe but actually we prefer to go up into the village <laughs> see who's around that's the way you get to know your your neighbors the community you bump into people um so that's how our day usually starts by just strolling into the village to have um morning coffee so that's one of my 
favourite things um, because it's something that I didn't do when I was in the UK, probably because it was too expensive as well to go for coffee every morning. Mm -hmm. Um, Prices of coffee isn't out there. That's for sure. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, Marissa. Really big differences in the price of coffee. That's for sure. Absolutely. And I think because you and I are living in a small village as well, it's, it's, I mean, if you compare that to like, if you have a coffee in Florence or Luca or Pisa, you know, I mean, our coffee's here, I don't know about you, but we pay, um, I think it's uh, a euro, a euro yes. for an espresso, so a cappuccino is a little bit more. So um, another thing that I absolutely love here is because even though we're in a small village, we're surrounded by hills and I love to hike. So um, literally within five minutes, I'm on a hiking trail um, and I can also climb all the hills and hike the hills around here as well, which I love doing. And uh, when you finally come to Vika Pisano, Marisa, I take you on a hike. Um, and one of my favourite hikes, when we stand on the hill, we can actually see as far as the Med, as the Mediterranean Sea, and see the oh. islands of Tiffany as well, which is, I just love, I feel so, so blessed that I can do that. So That's amazing. Um, I didn't realise yeah. we were going to see all the way to the sea. Yes, yeah. Well, we can see this. We can see Livorno <laughs> uh, oh, because we can see because there's a refinery there, so we can see that. But uh, we can also see um, Gorgona Island. Oh. So, a beautiful place. So, there's a little white church on a hill, which is part of the Comune of Vico Pisano, and we walk up there and we can watch the sun set into the sea, which is beautiful. Oh. So, it's along the olive oil route so because mm -hmm. Vico Pisano is on the olive oil route it produces olive oil so we have an olive oil farm at the edge of the village which is lovely so um, that's another one of my absolute favorite things I just love it that I can walk out of my door and start hiking but uh, yet perfect. I turn left and I'm in the center of a small village <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, Excellent. Um, so another thing that I like having access to um, the markets as well. So we have we have um, two markets in Vico Pisano, one on a Saturday morning, one on a Wednesday morning, which is the farmer's market. And so the local farmers or producers, we have a cheese producer, they come to Vico Pisano. Um, and so the, 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 the food that you can buy here, the produce is just so fresh. I very rarely go to a supermarket. Oh, yeah, so in Vico Pisano, we have two markets, but five minutes down the road, there's another little town, um, which is still part of the same community. They have a market on a different day. You go in another direction, there's a market there on another day. So um, so we're constantly buying like seasonal, uh, fresh produce. And I absolutely love this. It's so part of everyday living in Tuscany. Oh, that's just wonderful. And look, I do remember that from having lived in Italy and France as well for so many years. Um, to live and eat with the seasons is one of the best thing you can do for yourself anyway, as far as health. Absolutely. So, um, but it's just so easy, as you said, and it's so accessible, which is not the case always in big cities. I mean, in Europe, it's still pretty good. But there's nothing like village life for that, that's for sure. So I'm totally on board with you with that, that's for certain. Just a wonderful part of everyday life, really, to have those things just within reach like that, such easy. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, so I've talked about a lot of the wonderful things. It's all so gorgeous. <laughs> We've done all the flowery stuff, let's say. But for people, just so that we, you know, keep our feet firmly on the ground, what would you say are some of the challenges that you may have encountered yourself or that perhaps you see other people encountering when they come, say, as an expat, someone from another country coming to live in Italy, wanting to live that dream? Okay, I think the first thing has got to be the language. Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely helps if you have um, 
even if you have a few words to start off with. For anybody who is thinking of moving here, I would definitely suggest that they do Italian lessons if they can from home. And not to stress too much over it, as long as you can make yourself understood. I mean, I, I've been here a long time. I don't consider myself absolutely fluent, but people understand what I'm talking yeah. about. So, and I understand them. So I think that's the, that's the most important thing, but it is a challenge. Um, and I see it when we have guests come to stay with us as well. Um, Cause they're like, oh, you know, they panic a little bit because they can't communicate. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the challenges, definitely. Um, I totally agree another, with you. Mm, another challenge I would say for that is, um, you have to leave, um, you, you have to come here and live like a local, especially if you're going to be living in a small town. So you eat at one o'clock, basically. Tuscany, you eat at one o'clock. So the restaurants will be open, but all the shops and everything will be closed. The Italians have a time for everything. So <laughs> it's like that morning coffee is usually, well, from whatever time they open, say like six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock up till about 11. And then 12 o'clock, people are preparing their lunch. Um, the shops are going to close at one o'clock. The restaurants will be open from one to like 2.30, 3 o'clock. And so you have to fit in with that lifestyle. Yes. Um, again, referring to sometimes our guests and they'll say, oh, we're just going to go and do some shopping now and it's half past one. And I'm like, well, actually, no, everything's closed. <laughs> you, have to, you have to readjust <laughs> and fit so in with correct. local life. So, which can be a challenge for some people. Personally, Absolutely. I loved it. I love tradition. Um, but it, it can be a challenge for some people when they find it's better now because you can go to a bigger town and you can find a supermarket open. But, True. you know, I moved here 20 years ago and it was like everything was closed. Everything was closed on Sundays. So it can be a challenge. You have to get a little bit organised. <laughs> yes, and look, I think that's part of the whole thing of embracing where you're going. If you want to change countries, obviously you have to be open to embrace those those new schedules, those those differences that there are, which is absolutely what I love. And oh, I've got a little thing on the screen here. Oops, sorry. And um, we really do need to embrace those things. That's for certain. But like you, I love those things. I love traditions. So it doesn't upset me at all to be to be having a siesta yeah. with the Italians or just following. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Um, so just one little one uh, here. One. So a favourite place, if you had to name, since you've been in Vico Pisano, if you had to name a favourite place apart from your own village, of course, do you have a favourite place that you could name? Okay, apart from my own village, um, okay, I am a lover of the sea. Okay. So, and that was one of the reasons we chose Vico Pisano, because we're only like 30, 35 minutes away. Okay. So, I tend to gravitate to anywhere towards the sea. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean to say that I would live there permanently, but um, yeah, I love Marina di Pisa. I love Livorno. These are all places that people probably haven't heard of. <laughs> um, I've seen them written on the map. I've seen Marina di Pisa and I wondered what it was like. So it's obviously a place worthwhile visiting if you're saying it's one of your favourite places to go to. It, it is mine, but I also understand that many people, when they're coming to Tuscany, especially for the first time, they have preconceived ideas. They're going to see the rolling hills and the, and, and the certain landscapes and yeah. um, hilltop towns. And, of course, that's beautiful. It's very accessible all over Tuscany. Um, and uh, But I, I love the sea, so... I gravitate towards the sea. So when I've got the day off, I like to go and walk along the sea. But that's the beauty of living in a little corner of Tuscany, Mar Marissa, right. because we're not that far from the sea. So in the summer, when it gets hot, you can you can go to one of the lovely beach clubs. Um, in the winter, you can hike. We've got great sunsets. I love seafood. So that's where you get the best seafood. Um, 
but it's very hard to name one particular place in Tuscany. <laughs> oh no, look, I know I knew I was making your chore very, very <laughs> difficult, that's for sure. I, I can just imagine. But um that was really interesting that you brought up the seaside because I'm also an ocean lover and a sea lover, even though I've chosen also to go into the country. I love both. But that was one of the reasons why I also loved that part of Tuscany that you and I have both chosen in Provincia di Pisa because we are so close to the seaside. And also, I didn't know much about the Tuscan coastline, but it looks spectacular. Um, I've done a lot of the rest of Italy on the coastline, but I hadn't done much of Tuscany. And I'm really surprised at how beautiful it really, truly does look. So I can't wait to discover that, that part of our lovely region as well so I'm glad you brought that up that's really really interesting <laughs> yeah it's 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 lovely and the islands are really interesting so we're not far so um, from Livorno you can get to Capraia which is my which is my favorite island so far mm -hmm. but Elba's very interesting as well so and we're close and also being here uh, we're not too far from the Cinque Terre which I know is very popular yes. with a lot of we have a lot of American guests and it's Cinque Terre is always on their list and literally we can do it in an hour and a quarter. So Sensational. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for today. That has been, you've been a wealth of knowledge to us and I'm so, so excited about having met you for the first time, but also knowing that we are going to be neighbours almost and we'll be able to visit each other and share so much more in the future, that's for sure. And I'm sure everything you've told us today is going to be such useful information for all of our viewers out there as well. So for okay. everybody um, that doesn't already follow Marie, Marie has a beautiful Facebook. If you're on Facebook, she has a wonderful group as well, Authentic Tuscany and Authentic Tuscany Travel Tips. Um, as you can see, her home is stunning. She runs beautiful accommodation there in, in Pico Pisano. It looks like an amazing place to visit. They do wonderful tours with people and they make pasta and do all sorts of wonderful things. So make sure that you jump on. I'm going to be putting the link to her groups and different things as well with this video. So you'll be able to jump on those and check those out. But Marie, thank you so much for your time today. And I can't wait to meet your beautiful husband, Lorenzo, one day as well. And I'm sure we will talk each other's heads off when we eventually meet. Oh, I, I, can't <laughs> wait, I can't wait till you, till you get here. We have so much in common. We've just discovered we really in this little, little interview. Really <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to meeting David as well. I know, I know. <laughs> He's locked in the bedroom, so I'll, I'll let him out now. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in the garden, locked out. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, thank you so much for joining Tales from Tuscany today. We're really honoured to have you here and we'll see you all next time. And thank you again, Marie. It was lovely. Thanks, thank thanks you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.